Hey, what's up? So in this problem we have an infinite sum and we're going to determine if it converges or diverges. So whenever you have something like this with factorials and funky products, um, you want to use the ratio test. So we'll call it the ratio test. It says if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, and you get a number l, or it doesn't have to be a number actually, and you get l, let's say. So if l is bigger than 1, uh, we're going to say it diverges. So if you get infinity, um, it diverges. Um, if you get 2, it diverges. If L is less than 1, it converges. And the worst possible case is when L is equal to 1, uh, because in this case you have no information, so no info. Okay, so let's carefully rewrite this and use the ratio test. So this here, this whole piece here, this is our a sub n. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity. All right, and we have to write a sub n plus 1 up top. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and replace all of the n's with n plus 1's. Okay, so this is going to be negative 1. And then um, when you put an n plus 1 here, you're going to get n plus 2. So n plus 2, because n plus 1 plus 1 is 2. Then we get uh, n plus 1 factorial, which is writing down a sub n plus 1 now, right? Over over, then you have parentheses 1 times 3 times 5 times dot 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 times, then we have 2n plus 1. You might say, wait a minute, you didn't plug in n plus 1. We'll check this out. Now I'm going to plug it in. So if you replace n with n plus 1, you get 2n plus 1 plus 1, right? So that's going to be 2n plus 2, so that's 2n plus 3. Right, because it's 2n plus 2 plus 1, right? Because 2 times 1 is 2, then you add the 1 and you get 3. So the next term here is 2n plus 3. So the only thing we've written down, right, the only thing we've written down, this piece here, this is a sub n plus 1, right? And the trick is, when you do that, to always include this piece, right? So this is the piece that's before this one. Right? We're going to need that to do the problem, right? So be really, really careful. So always include, so replace the n with n plus 1, right? And do that. You get 2n plus 3. But also write this one down because that's the one before it. We're going to need that. Now we're dividing by a sub n. That's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of what you see here, right? So it's times, and then I'm going to write it backwards, right? Because we're flipping it. We're multiplying by the reciprocal. And see, this is where the magic happens. This is the reason that I left the 2n plus 1 there, right? Because now look, it's going to cancel in the next step with this one. Then we flip it so we get negative 1 to the n plus 1, and then we have n factorial. So recap, when you're doing these problems with these factorials and funky products, um, just always try the ratio test. It works like pretty much every time, 99% of the time it should work. Um, and then when you plug in n plus 1, you know, you do that. Be really careful. Again, it was 2 n plus 1 plus 1. So that's 2n plus 2 plus 1, which gave us 2n plus 3, which is here. But notice that we wrote this one down, too, because it's the one before it, right? It's the one before it. Let's see what happens. Well, the 1s cancel. Voila. The 3s cancel. Voila. The 5s cancel. Good stuff. The 2n plus 1 cancels. These negatives, they get eaten by the, by the absolute values, right? Because the absolute value of negative 1 to any power... Well, this is either 1 or negative 1. If it's 1, you get 1. If it's negative 1, you get 1, because the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So they, they kill the, absolute, uh, the negative 1s. I can drop the absolute value now, and I'll just remove the negative 1s. So we have, we have what do we have left? Let's see, we have n plus 1 factorial, right, because n's an integer, so it's positive, and the, absolute, the negative 1s go away because of the absolute value, always. And we're left with, down here, we have 2n plus 3, and we also have this n factorial. Again, all the negative 1 to the n's, they, they all just go away, right? They're all equal to 1. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1. And then the next one is n, n minus 1. So it's n plus 1, n factorial. And then here we have 2n plus, uh, plus 3, n factorial. Oh, this is cool. This is really cool because we get limit, n goes to infinity, n plus 1, 2n plus 3, right? And so now, now these degrees are the same, right? This is, they're both 1. So it's just the ratio of the leading coefficients. That's 1 half. That's less than 1. So boom, so it converges 
by the ratio test. Nice problem. I did not um, really think about what the answer would be. I just knew that we should try the ratio test. So kind of a cool problem. Um, I hope this video has helped someone out there. That's it.